Hello everyone and welcome to the presentation of this scientific paper. And the title of this scientific paper is Optimum Coordination of Non-Directional Overcurrent Protection for the application in the very well-known SIGRE European Medium Voltage Benchmark Distribution Network. And the authors of these scientific papers are Linan Haipam, Rayu Wogel, Giacchino Tricarico, Professor Kosu Abdullah, and of course myself, Professor Francisco Gonzalez Longat. This scientific paper is the product of the collaboration between several institutions, including Loughborough University in the United Kingdom, the University of Southeastern Norway in Poshkin, Norway, UIT, the Arctic University of Norway in Narvik, Norway, Politecnico di Bari in Italy, and of course the Applied Automation and Industrial Diagnostic Laboratory at the University of Delphi in Argelia. Well, without further delay, let me start presenting a general agenda for this very important presentation. And today I will start with a general introduction, then I will go through the overcurrent protection relay, I will present the proposed methodology in this scientific paper, then some numerical results, and finally the conclusions. And let's start with a general introduction. I believe that everyone understands that probably the most used uh, protection system is based on what we call the overcurrent. What I'm trying to tell you is that protection against excess of current was naturally the earliest protection system. It's the oldest protection system, it's the first protection system that we establish. And the principle is very, very simple because we use the magnitude of the current to create a difference between the normal condition and the fault condition. It's very clear that during normal condition, the current, the magnitude of the current is close to the nominal current of the conductor. But during a short circuit or a very dangerous situation, fall, a fall condition, the current, the magnitude of the current can be several times the load current or the nominal current. So the overcurrent protection system use the magnitude of the current as a mechanism to identify the normal and defaulted condition. And what is very important to understand is that we want to use the overcurrent protection in order to minimize the exposition of the equipment and also the potential danger to the personnel by using the overcurrent protection devices to stop the or to minimize the effect of the overcurrent. And there are several devices that we can find in the electrical power system dedicated for overcurrent protection. The, probably the oldest one and the most famous one is the fuse. But there are many others like the very, uh, very well used in low voltage system, the direct acting trip mechanism on circuit breakers. But also at distribution level, we can find the relays that they are creating the trip signal to the circuit breaker. But when we are talking about our current protection, well, there are different mechanisms that we can use this over current situation to identify the fault. For instance, if we consider the magnitude of the um, over current, well, we can, we can define one protection mechanism that is called the non-directional over current. And this non-directional over current protection is based on the magnitude of the current as the main indicator to create the difference between normal and abnormal condition. However, in some other cases, in some other cases, we can use the direction of the current in order to discriminate between fault conditions and no fault conditions. And in those cases, we are talking about the directional overcurrent. 
If you are in America, you must be aware that there is the ANSI IEEE standard to define number for the different protection uh, devices. And for instance, the number 5050 is used in America for the instantaneous overcurrent and the 5151 for the time overcurrent. But on the other hand, 67 is used to represent what we know as directional overcurrent relay. Well, but when we are talking about overcurrent protection, we need to think about the principles that we use for coordination. And when we are thinking about overcurrent pro uh, coordination, we need to think about possible mechanism to mm, create the discrimination and the selectivity between the devices. And that is the reason that we can think about discrimination by time, discrimination by current, or a combination of discrimination by time and current. Here in this slide, we are presenting the discrimination on the, le on the left hand side based on time. In this case, if we have a fault here near to the push bar B, of course, we can use a def definite time uh, relay in order to make the trip happen at the relay B, at the, at the circuit breaker located at this here near to B, or we can use some time delay in order to create the mm, discrimination between the different possible locations between relays. However, what is one, one of the main disadvantages of this, of this approach? Well, that if you look over here to this radial system with time discrimination, as soon as you are near to the main, uh, of, to the main source, you can see that the time start to increase so much. So this, this kind of discrimination has the disadvantage that as you are near to the source, the time starts to be higher. And that is not a good, a good way to create a grading. The other way is to use the current, the short circuit currents. As far as, as you are from the generation point, as low as the current is. As you can see here, the short circuit level here at the bus bar A is very, very low compared with the short circuit level near to the generation at the point E. For that reason, we can use the magnitude of the short circuit current to create discrimination. However, in some configurations, this discrimination using short circuit levels start to be a bit difficult because the electrical distances or the magnitudes start to be very, very small. For that reason, today, we in, in modern uh, distribution systems, we use a principle that is the combination of the time and current grading. In those cases, we can use different, different curves and we can use a separation between the curve based in current and on time. And this is basically the scheme for grading the, and settings the overcurrent, non-directional overcurrent relays that we are following in this paper. Well, now let me tell you about the methodology that we are discussing here. As you must be aware, when you are using uh, inverse time overcurrent protection relay, there are some standards that they define the mm, operating time characteristic. For instance, if you are using the standard inverse, very inverse, extremely inverse, or long time standard airfoil, you will have characteristic that they have different shape based on those parameters over here, alpha and beta. Well, what we want to do in this paper is basically define a methodology to create the coordination in several relays in a radial topology as presented before. And what we want to do is define the, define the, the, the main indicators of this inverse curve, in this case, the TMS, and the time delay between, or, or the time separation between those devices. 
For that reason, what we want to do is minimize the total operating time of the whole set of relays at the time that we are considering a time difference between the operation between two protections. So in this case, we are formulating the problem using mathematical optimization and what we want to do is minimize the function fx where x is the decision variable and what we are doing is defining the setting of the non-directional overcurrent relay. And from there, what we need to do is consider some restrictions and those restrictions are basically the time difference in between the operation and the grading or the time interval used between two protection devices. Well, what we have done is using for demonstrate or methodology, the classical cigarette medium voltage distribution benchmark system. And as you can see, this system is basically two main feeders with some um, with some devices, S1, S2, and S3, that they allow the system to work in a radial topology. For this scientific paper and the simulations and results presented here, we are considering that this, the, the switches S1, S2, and S3, they are open. And here in red color, we are indicating the circuit, the location of the circuit breakers and the correspondent and the correspondent relay R1, R2, and so on. For that reason, we define that those relays located in both feeders, they must fulfill the primary, um, the primary protection and also offer backup. In this table over here, you can see who is the primary protection and who is offering the backup protection. And we formulate the problem of minimizing the total time coordination. And from there, we establish the equations that we need to solve using an optimization technique. For the time inverse characteristic, we, ha we have used the standardized standard inverse and we are considered 0 0.3 seconds as the interval coordination. From there, you can see on the left-hand side, the quality constraints, and also here you can see the formulation in a matrix form. From there, we have room to simulations. In one simulation, we presented the, um, we solved the optimization problem using MATLAB, um, and we obtain these the settings of the relays for these uh, using the proposed uh, the proposed approach. And on the other hand, we use Dixieland Power Factory, that is a very well known uh, software. And this very well known software has the capability of coordinating automatically coordinating over current protection. And from there, what we are doing is basically comparing the, comparing the results of the calculations using on the column one, the proposed method, and on the column two, the results obtained from the Xilin Power Factory. And as you can see over here, the results are almost similar and the discrepancy between those, uh, those calculations is below to 0 0.01. And then you can see here the time, uh, time current um, diagram where we are showing the coordination between several relays on the feeder. And from there, we demonstrate using Dixiel and Power Factory that all a proposed method was able to create a time current um, a time current coordination for the feeder well it's time to close this presentation with some conclusions and in this paper we propose a methodology to define the settings of non-directional overcurrent relays using optimization and in this case we present some simulation results to validate the proposed methodology using the SIGRE European Medium Voltage Benchmark Network. And at the same time, 
In this, in this paper, we solve the optimization problem using non-linear multivariable function in MATLAB, and we compare the results with the Xilin power factory. The conclusion is that there is a minor discrepancy between the results and mm, are providing the proper coordination for non-directional overcurrent. And this is the end of this presentation. Thank you for your attention, and it's time for question and answer. Thank you so much.